hello to our lovely viewers. We are here again with Matthew Bell and I playing Master Duel, and today we're going to be discussing the newly announced Forbidden and Limited list update. Oh god, who hasn't been waiting for this for months? That's my first thought when I finally got the message. It's like, hey, you Forbidden and Limited list dropped. Funny enough, I've always been on the other side of that conversation where I knew when it was going to drop because I used to work on it, but I, I've, like, so I was really excited to see that we're actually finally getting an update because the game has felt quite stale for the last, what, two seasons, I'd say? Yeah, uh, I, I was able to hit Plat 1 in January and February, but in March I stopped when I got to Platinum. I, I didn't actually like feel like grinding through all the Drytron again and all the Tri Brigade again. Yeah. And then um, in this month I'm actually still like, I think I'm, yeah, I'm still gold five. I've only actually played, like, the rated games for my daily missions. I've barely actually touched, uh, like, I spend a lot of time with, like, the new solo modes and the synchro festival, but as far as, like, just hopping in the rated queue, I haven't cared. Like, I, nothing changed. I was really excited when those selection packs came out, and they were like, here's, like, Baron de Fleur and the rest of the Stardust stuff and the rest of, like, the Despia things and like Dawn of Majesty and I was just like oh cool like we could finally try some of these things and it's uh it's pretty severely lacking during our last podcast I did mention like that Despia is actually an extraordinarily good deck and believe it or not there was a YCS over the weekend that Despia just won but um mm. the the deck really gets all of its tools in Burst of Destiny where I did not realize that I knew that Guardian Chimera was in Battle of Chaos, and I knew that Burst of Destiny had like some of the cards, but I didn't realize that it had the fusion spells and like the 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 starter cards that it's like so sorely lacking. I still feel like you could probably play Despia with like Dark Lords or Preta Plants right now on Master Duel and definitely hit Plat One with it. And I feel like I'll try maybe this week because I've got some time and. I, I don't want to end the season in gold because I'll be silver next month for it. But... Oh yeah, whenever I look at your profile, I'll see you have that one gold badge, and I'll just say that's because Dan didn't care enough. I just mean, he didn't he didn't want it badly enough. They, they can call it season four all they want, but the dual pass even didn't update until like what was it like two weeks ago? Like we're we're actually on season two where the card pool finally changed, the dual pass finally reset. And uh, we're finally getting a Forbidden and Limited list update. And frankly, I don't even feel like Season 2 starts until May 9th when it does. But... Well, then let's jump to the list, because that is what the good folks are watching for. Is they want to hear what's changed, or rather, what hasn't changed. Well, uh, we, we certainly have the expected date. And we can see that it takes place after the Japanese holiday, the Golden Week, which makes complete and total sense to me. Yeah, uh, people won't be in the office, and it's... <laughs> When people take vacation, so it makes total sense. The uh, the Forbidden and Limited list, uh, it does work differently than Duel, Link Duel Links, thankfully. Uh, as much as I love how Duel Links implements their list, I was worried that when they did an update to the Forbidden list on this game, that they would take this a similar approach and be like, okay, here was like your Forbidden and Limited list, but also here's a bunch of cards that you can only have two of total across all of your decks, the way Duel Links oh. did it. I'd absolutely stop playing. If that was if that change happened, the reason I play this is because it's as close to the TCG as you can get without actually having to uh, go in person events. It's something I'm just not that motivated to do anymore. And if they change that, I would really struggle to enjoy the game because it'd be a case of like, well, I came here to play Yu-Gi-Oh! and you're asking me to play something that's not Yu-Gi-Oh! This is a problem that I've had with all of the events is I feel like you kind of have to do it for the gems, but at the same time, it's kind of not... It's actually weird that I say that now that I think about it because I complain that the game has been a bit stale and then I don't want to play in those other alternate formats. There's <laughs> some really interesting user problems. See, so yeah, I put my product manager hat back on now and I'm like, of how to solve that. But that all said done, what's, what's actually happening with the FNL list? Because we know it's going to work just like it does in the TCG and, or the OCG. Yes, so the first thing is nothing got banned. Uh, okay, so we're done here. Uh, guys, I'll catch you again for the next one. Cheers. <laughs> no, 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 roll it, roll it, roll it, roll it. Yeah. So what's... Uh, obviously, nothing got forbidden. Obviously, um, extra deck cards 
for the most part, there's no difference between one and three copies of something that you're just making once a duel anyway and always have access to. I don't think anyone would be upset if Nightmare Phoenix got limited to one copy. But uh, when I see no bans, the first thing that comes to my head, sorry, no forbiddens, uh, the, the first thing that comes to my head is always no Link monster or Xyz monster got hit. And the first thing I was looking for when I heard that there was a list update was did true king of all calamities get yep. hit? That was the one that was right at the tip of my tongue. I was like, <laughs> so... don't jump in, don't jump in. Is it true kings of all calamities? <laughs> like that card, definitely not something that we should be, should not be a part of the format. That and uh, Rongon Miniad. Uh, yes. I forget which number it is. I think it's 86. Number 86. Oh, that card can also die in a fire. But yeah, I see a lot less Phantom Knights than I do uh, Virtual World, interestingly. So uh, uh, there's there's two things there. Uh, the first being that if they had banned True King of All Calamities, you can bet you'd see a heck of a lot more Rongo Miniad if they didn't also ban him. But uh, I find that if you play on the first or second of the month, the only deck you'll see is Virtual World. All the is that because it's like super fast to climb with because it's so oppressive? Yes. All, all the people who just get plat one and move on are like... There was people who downloaded this game, built Virtual World day one, hit plat one, and then stopped playing. And they came back in February and did it again, and then they came back in March and did it again. Because they have no reason to play once they hit plat one, except to risk their plat one status. There's nothing for a plat one player to do on the game, unless they're like casually playing against their friends, and like you, you can do that in a number of different ways. And then there's also like solo mode, which is just not interesting to a lot of people. It is to me, but again, like I remember on the, before the end of January, I had solo mode completely exhausted of content. My account was plat one, my dual pass was maxed out. And I was like, see ya in April. Like there was nothing really yeah. for me. So I can understand like why these people only come back just to reclaim their plat one status. and. That is where most of the virtual world players are, especially since they did it back in January before the format became Eldlick, Drytron, like the things that are more or less established based on content creators and online websites posting tier lists and so on. Well, it's so really, forth. really interesting. And I will give a shout out to a Riot employee, Mort Dog, who works on Team Fight Tactics. He actually said in his stream something, which is he articulated it way better than I can is data will show you what's happening. It won't tell you what's good because people will gravitate to things that they think are popular, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they should be playing those things. Absolutely. And like, that's exactly what you're saying. If people are on like Eldlick or if they're on Drytron, uh, in the data, it may be like everybody, it looks like, oh yeah, everybody's playing uh, one of these decks. And it's like the virtual world decks, it's like, might have been like, Hey, this is the most efficient thing to climb with, but no one's playing with it, so we just don't talk about it, really. Or it doesn't show up in the data, and then they don't address. You don't, as a designer, you don't go, "Oh, okay, well, we just got to look at this," and then you don't address what's an actual problem. Right, and like I've got two of my own friends uh, in my personal life that have played Master Duel for maybe a collective total of thirty hours since it came out, and they have hit Plat One all four seasons in a row by just logging in on the first of each month, playing virtual world for four hours, getting plat one, and then moving on with their lives. Because it is probably the best deck you can play in Master Duel. It's super boring. I'm just gonna come right out and say like, you play the exact same duel every single duel. But like, you don't even have to worry about like, True King of All Calamities is limited, and the only thing that does to the deck is stop it from playing around Nibiru, because you don't get to make the second Calamities if you get Nibiru'd and the first one can't call light on your own turn while making the second one to, again, play around it. But hmm. I've never been Nibiru'd on Master Duel in my life. Have you not? I get it happen to me quite a lot. It does. Oh, I mean, you're always playing like True Drake or Burn. <laughs> this is why you <laughs> I mean, to be fair, you. yeah, but like, I I've still have played like my Drytron deck a little bit. I've played a few decks that are vulnerable to Nibiru. And I have helped out a few different friends over like Discord calls and stuff. I've never seen it. Uh, I, I remember Billy Brake played it one time, but that's Billy Brake. Like it makes sense. 
your average like casual player, I find, isn't spending their ultra rare points on copies of Nibiru. Like maybe one. But like they're they're going for Ash Blossoms and Max Seas and Effect Veilers and Imperms first, to say nothing of the Ultra Rares that are actually in their deck. So the concern about quote unquote playing around Nibiru is dramatically lower in Master Duel than it would be in, like, your local daily life. So... Well, again, it's like a best of one format. You're going to come up against a lot of players where Nibiru is nowhere near as strong. Yeah. Versus, uh, whereas you could just side them out if they're not really important for the TCG. Uh, which makes definitely makes things like cross site Designator interesting. All right, so we've had a bit of a theory about where Master Duel is. Let's talk about where it's going with these changes. So run yes. us through the changes, Dan. So, the first things would be the two limits, Conquistador of the Golden Land and Cyber Angel Ben 10. Um, anyone who actually played the TCG formats of the last six months will tell you that Ben 10 going to one was a dramatic shift to the deck in real life tabletop dueling as well. Uh, it, it is a hit that makes complete and total sense to me. I would have completely forbidden it outright, but limiting it does take a lot of options off the table. Uh, anyone who actually saw the Drytron deck profile that I did on the channel, uh, the strongest play of the deck, truly what I was making my goal of turn one every game, was Tribute Summoning Vanity's Ruler using two copies of Ben 10 so that I could search for Eva and Orange Light. And that is not even remotely close to possible anymore with only one copy of Ben 10. I can't even get that one copy on the field probably, let alone have two of them when the card is limited. So it, it does dramatically slow down the output of fairies and free bodies that you get. Um, I may actually have to play a Beatrice now just to get extra copies of bodies in my graveyard. Uh, it certainly yeah. doesn't kill the Drytron deck, and I feel like that was probably a goal of the list designer, was rather than make the deck unplayable, uh, simply clip its wings a little to increase the amount of deck diversity in the format. Uh, that said, that is exactly the type of thing that happened to Eldritch with uh, Conquistador's hit here. Uh, this was not a ban of Skill Drain or Imperial Order. This was not a hit of There Can Only Be One or Rivalry or Gozen or any of these floodgates that make the Eldritch deck popular. But uh, cutting off two of the Conquistadors means that when they're cycling through their Scarlet Sanguines, they're going to have to use Hequero, uh three times as often now. Instead of taking one of your monsters with them, instead of being able to go Conquistador Sanguine three turns in a row, they're going to have to go Conquistador Sanguine once, and then Hequero Sanguine the two times after that. And that is definitely going to hamper the deck's win rate by quite a bit. Uh, I, I know that I've seen in public discussion, Facebook groups, Discord servers, a lot of people feeling like this Conquistador hit is completely meaningless. It's a slap on the wrist at most because they didn't hit any of the floodgates or any of the things that El Eldritch is using to win, but I can personally promise you that at uh, a certain type of play, the floodgates stop affecting you as much once like you know how to like play around them and what you do. And obviously like if they open like Skill Drain Imperial Order, like they can Exodia you, but not just Eldritch can do that. A lot of decks can. Um, as far as how Eldritch wins the game, against someone who actually has like say the lightning storms when we had our ignister decks and stuff something that was built to be ready for it uh eldritch no longer can beat those decks i i'm pretty sure the ignister deck can't even lose to eldritch unless the ignister deck loses to itself by opening like six monsters so this conquistador hit is actually extraordinarily impactful to the point that in my opinion it makes eldritch completely unplayable now that is very interesting. So my question, I'll start with Drytron. Sure. Uh, that's a deck that I would literally like to see nuked from orbit. Of uh, course. It's every deck that I've tried to build a feature around, I set the standard too high. I was like, okay, I'm going to get the decks to plat one and then I'm going to create the uh, features that we see on our YouTube channel. And then I realized that the decks that are building were constantly being built to beat Drytron. So all the decks kind of ended up looking the same. And then if the deck was relying on uh, two card combos, it just like, you just hit, you get hard stuck in plat because then you'd be really, really struggling when you're back, you're ping-ponging between building your deck to beat Drytron and building it to beat 
Eldlick. And if you're putting cards that are good against Eldlick, you're losing to your Drytron matchup. If you're putting cards good against Drytron, your Eldlick matchup ends up getting quite horrendous. So I'm quite happy to see that at least somebody has addressed part of the problems with the Drytron deck. The biggest problem for me is that it's uh, overly oppressive once it sets up. And it has a constant flood of resources. Although I am curious, can they still play Beatrice with only one Cyber Angel, Angel Benton? Because I know in part of the combo, you get back your ritual spell and then you ritual summon the Benton from the graveyard. Do you have enough gas to actually get to that point with only one Cyber Angel Benton? You're a bit more of an expert with Drytrons, so you might be able to answer. So the Diviner of the Heralds increases its level by four when it sends the Herald of the Ark, like and becomes a level six monster. Yeah, that, yeah that's, that's that's right. But I mean, like, do you have enough gas to get through your whole deck to do your whole combo and get the Beatrice? Yes, absolutely. It's actually what the TCG version of the deck had been doing for the last, like, three months because Benton was limited in the TCG. Ah, right, which then prompted the uh, Eva to be forbidden, yes. eventually. Which... Uh, we, we still have yeah. um, the Drytron new Beta Fafnir as well, sending from the deck to the graveyard. It's... Uh, the idea of using Union Carrier to equip Dawn Knight and dump a Drytron that you can like just summon is... It, it's so much easier to make Union Carrier than it is to make Beatrice, and the only reason we were making Beatrice in the TCG was Union Carrier was banned in the TCG. And uh, I feel like a lot of the Drytron lists that you see on Master Duel are just like looking at TCG Drytron lists and seeing the Beatrice and everything that modern TCG lists are doing and just adding two Ben 10 to those decks to make it just a turbocharged version of that deck. But mm -hmm. before the Union Carrier ban, we weren't using Beatrice. We were using like Union Carrier and Dawn Knight, and we weren't even using Harold. I said we were using Vanity's Ruler because it's even if they have the Imperm to like turn him off, they still have to play through two Harold Orange Lights. Like it's so unbelievably oppressive to play through all that. And I don't know if this change is gonna slow down how much the deck appears on ladder because it does give you such easy wins in a best of one format yes. even with the one benton it's just it feels like it's not enough to get that deck at least out of people's hands so they want to look at something else yeah the the one benton just changes it to the modern tcg version of the deck which is still herald of perfection like it, it just it makes you have to play the worst version of the deck that everyone was already playing on Master Duel really anyway. Um, I, I will say that uh, based on some of the semi-limits, which we'll get to, um, it does suggest a certain update or two to the card pool that's coming, and those updates suggest that Drytron will be less represented in the ladder, especially with only one Ben 10. So it mm. might be enough to curb the over-representation that Drytron seems to have in Master Duel, but uh, we'll get uh, to that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's funny, because I have a former colleague um, who still works for Kadabi, and I was talking to him uh, a little bit, and I sort of said, oh, how are you getting on with Master Duel? He's like, oh, you know, it's like, you don't have to be very good at Yu-Gi-Oh when you, they can't play Yu-Gi-Oh. And I was like, are you playing Drytron? He's like, of course I am. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That was that was literally what I said. It's like you don't have to be good at Yu-Gi-Oh when the opponent can't play Yu-Gi-Oh, and I think, no, you're not wrong. You're absolutely not wrong. I feel like this doesn't go far enough, but that's just because if I want to build some weird off-the-wall stuff, that Drytron just kind of takes up too much of my uh, deck. My deck diversity is built around trying to not lose to Drytron. <laughs> it almost feels like maybe they should have like. Uh, ranked ladder tier forbidden lists where like uh, Herald of Perfection is forbidden in bronze, silver, and gold. So, mm, like, nah, you can't do that. <laughs> once you like, I mean, it effectively happens anyway. All the Drytron players up, uh, upgrade out of gold sooner or later, and then you stop seeing Drytron decks when you play in gold. Uh, they they graduate to platinum on their own um, yeah, and then they they constantly terrorize you when you're in plat two trying to just get yes. that last win and then you'll play two drytrons who open perfectly and the coin toss and you're like guess we need three wins to get to plat one now <laughs> I, I was just thinking on like the line like when you said you like to play your off the wall stuff i was thinking like yeah you like to play like gold tier decks and i was like i wonder if 
we actually like Pokemon does that. They have like different tiers where uh, they'll just ban like fifty Pokemon that are all the most like fifty most used guys and be like, you're not allowed to use those ones. Play something else for once. And they call it like the underused tier or something like that. Maybe it's like rarely used something, but uh, like the Yu-Gi-Oh equivalent of that, where it's like, oh yeah, the like this forbidden list only affects like you once you hit. Uh, platinum. Once you hit platinum, everything's fair game. But in gold, like you don't have to worry about skill drain because it's not in there. And I don't know. It could be maybe some oh, event that. To answer your question, though, yeah, I do take gold tier decks up to platinum, and in some cases, I do get them to plat one. But then that's the issue, right? As soon as you get to plat, you start running into those decks. All of a sudden, it's like uh, I kind of have to write this concept off because I don't have enough ways to deal with these kinds of oppressive uh, decks. And that's just Drytron. I haven't even gotten to uh, Eldlick. So, actually what this tells me is that the team that's made the decisions here, I will, I, again, I've got to be very careful how I talk about this stuff because I used to work on this for the TCG and I don't want to say anything that could be taken from one side to the other, if that makes sense, or you can infer things. Uh, but what this implies to me is that they understand how the decks work and how to weaken them, but they don't understand what stops players having fun. And that'll be things like your skill drains, there can be only one, uh, all of that sort of stuff. There's like almost the fun factor hasn't been considered with this uh, with this FNL list. It, like so one Cyber Angel bent in, I don't think that's enough. Conquistador, I actually am kind of grateful for this. It was, it was already kind of really annoying to try and play for the, the uh, the floodgates but then when you got to that point where you could almost make a move and you, they always had the i'm gonna pop your guy and then i'm gonna do that again next turn and then the next turn you almost had to if you didn't win that turn it, immediately your win percentage against eldlick felt like it dropped off a cliff just because of how much advantage they got and how easy it was for them to interact in your turn absolutely uh but yeah like this this list definitely hasn't taken the fun factor of the game into consideration and that is it's difficult, right? Because you could argue that you should only make decisions based on hard data about what's actually happening. But then a whole point of people enjoying your game is that there is a fun factor about it that people are, this is the reason they want to engage, is why they want to log in each season and get to Platinum 1, even though there's no rewards after you do so. And that hasn't been taken in consideration. Like I, we'll go through the rest of the, the list, but the fact that none of the cards that were causing the biggest problems to be forbidden or at least the most oppressive cards were forbidden uh these hits they are impactful in subtle ways that people will realize as they play through those decks and adapt but you still if you if you're basically i feel like if you're playing a gold tier deck you're not going to be having any more fun with these changes yeah absolutely um in fact some of these changes actually make it harder for gold tier decks uh, yeah, should we move on to the, the semi-limited section then? Uh, I, I'm just gonna, just because there's one card on it and it's like immediate. Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon went to three. Um, this is because the only reason it was hit in the first place was text it no longer has. It had been functionally errated to suck and having three copies is no different than having one copy anymore. So it's just gone to three. Why it wasn't already on the Master Duel list, I can only assume is because it was using a snapshot of a time period before the card had gone back to three. Uh, what was the errata like? It's like once per duel now. Like it's once per once per duel, not even once per turn. Wow, somebody decided to <laughs> take a sledgehammer to that one. It, it might it might be like hard once per turn, like one red eyes darkness metal dragon effect per turn, but I don't know that it's ever been used twice in one duel since that change because it's always like just getting banished or linked off and then forgotten about and because mm. black metal dragon just searches for it anyway nobody plays more than one yeah no, it makes sense uh so, semi-limited cards the first one is dd dynamite and why isn't this at one <laughs> like you, so... you just want you don't want that deck in the game at all why not just put it to one uh because it went from six to two when they did that. You can't use Trap Trick to banish one and set the other anymore. Yeah, that's that's fair. Uh, the uh, consistency of the deck has fallen from 82% to 19%. It basically can't win anymore. Oh, is it only is it as low as 19%? Yeah. Okay. 
Oh, that means that the bots aren't going to waste their time on the ladder with it. They're going to just be playing the um, the other FTK that you can play with the... Uh, is it the Ignite? It's, it's Cyberstein and, yeah, with the Ignite monsters. Yeah, so the bots are going to play that instead. Yeah, at least yes, gonna and, and that's the that. other thing is that, like, I can appreciate that they hit DD Dynamite, and I can appreciate that they left it at 2 in case people, for any honest reason, want to play such a degenerate card. But, um... The, the fact that they hit that and not uh, the Stein FTK, they didn't like limit Reprodocus, for example, like shows that they were making their decisions with like insufficient information or too long ago and not keeping up with like the evolution of the bots or something. They're using data, they're not looking at what's good. Yeah. And uh, I, the DD Dynamite FTK was a lot easier to play and a lot easier to acquire the cards for, I imagine. Uh, and and that's why it's like... Longer. Yeah, and the Cyberstein deck just got overlooked. But the fact that you have bots on the ladder playing this stuff and succeeding at more than 50% of win rate is should be considered a, a primary problem to solve. Yeah, I mean, the reason they do it is the uh, dual victory drops occasionally contain gems, and they're just gem farming. Yeah, which makes sense because once you get the plat one, like they just go, okay, I leave my car on. Uh, you know, you could. It's it's not as efficient as, but it's probably more efficient than Bitcoin mining at this point. But um, <laughs> yeah, it's just farm gems, and then they can just never have to spend money on the game. Uh, even that's even more an incentive to make sure that these decks yeah, don't. I, I, I'm pretty sure at some point it will convert into account selling, where they'll like try and sell an account that has every ultra rare on it. Yeah, oh, yeah, of course. That, that absolutely, absolutely. There's going to be no no questions asked in my mind. But okay, now that you've sort of explained the stats with the DD Dynamite, I would have I would have been much more heavy-handed with it. But I, if it's down as low as nineteen percent, then that's fine. At least the bots are not going to play it. It's just yeah, as you mentioned, the fact that there's a complete omission. And I do want to talk about the omissions when we get through this whole list about what the, my faults are on on that side of things. But the fact that they ignored that Cyberstein version is kind of like guys come on <laughs> Seca's light is this is the most confounding hit on the list to me um I, i've seen I, it played once i i'm sure someone out there knows something i don't maybe the person who made this list is that someone but i i, I recognize that this thing is just three pot of greeds for a deck that plays 40 monsters i i myself have played Seca's light decks before but Master yeah, Tom Rose, Rose. he Ma Master was the Rose national champion with it. Three Pot of Desires, three Upstart Goblin, three Chicken Game, and a Terraforming to get it. I can play those ten cards in any deck on Earth, and it will be more consistent than the deck with three Sekka's Lights in it, including the deck with three Sekka's Lights. You could take the same 37 monsters and add those ten spells I said, and the deck will be more consistent than it was with three Sekka's Lights. I don't know why they hit this card and not Pot of Desires. I don't un, like. I have no idea what the goal is with semi limited. Oh, cards. like you could see it. You could definitely see it, right? No, I can't. There's no ultra rares on that list. There's no super rares, is there? Uh, I believe there are super rares. Trivagrade Fractal, I'm pretty sure, is a super rare. Uh, but. Yeah, Conquistador is not an ultra rare or super rare. Ben, ben 10, 10 is, is a super. super rare. But yes, uh, I, I did actually pick that up when I first saw the list. I was like, wow, they didn't hit any ultras. That's kind of funny. <laughs> but uh, Pot of Desires is a super. And like, I just don't... like I, Unless the hit to Sekka's Light is to encourage them to use higher rarity draw cards because Sekka's Light's only a rare or something. I haven't even checked its rarity. Uh that also feels like a weird oversight that I can't just like hover over these cards and like look at them right now, but whatever. Second slide's a great card. I I guess there's something to be said that we're not aware of right now as to why that card deserved to be semi-limited. I can see it right now, and on the ladder I've not seen it represented barely at all. So there there is some there's somebody has got have a reason for it that is probably not common knowledge right now. Uh, Fusion Destiny, Torn Scales, Lao Lao, uh, Roxy's, and Adamantipator Analyzer. Um, these are all 
these, these hits all suggest the release of Burst of Destiny. Um, the, the next TCG slash OCG set after Dawn of Majesty it came out three months after uh, Dawn of Majesty. Um, Master Duel launched with half of Dawn of Majesty, and the card pool update we got with the two new selection packs was just the other half of Dawn of Majesty. Um, I don't have any idea, nor does anyone really, what the release schedule for Master Duel is going to be for new cards. If we are just going to get, like, here's Dawn, uh, here's Burst of Destiny, the next set, or maybe they're going to release it in three different selection packs, or maybe across two different updates we'll get two chunks of 40 instead of all 80 at once. Like, I don't know, but, uh, like, hitting Fusion Destiny, I'm pretty confident that isn't because people are using Anaconda to dump it and summon the dystopia Destiny hero. I'm pretty sure that's not... I I did that and got a deck to play <laughs> free about day. It was about day two, I think it was, of the ranked season. I got to play free before I uh, sort of felt demotivated uh, to to keep climbing with it because I was struggling with some of the. <laughs> yeah. They didn't have quite enough gas and it felt a little bit too hard to win games. But yeah, I was playing Dystopia with uh, the Destiny Hero. You banish from your graveyard to gain a fire as an attack and Celestia, so you could do the scythe, uh, the scythe trick. Yeah, artifact scythe that you're play that people are playing in the TCG apparently. Yeah, but without destroy Phoenix Enforcer um, to destroy your scythe, it's. Um... Oh, you just use the uh, dystopia to do it. Yes, um... like I said, like that that combo does not scream we need to hit fusion destiny, especially because the reason you put it to two is so that it can't be hard drawn. Like people play three copies of it and the anaconda. Uh, yeah, put, like putting it to two is the difference between seeing it once a match, and, and that's the other thing too is that like the forbidden list in the OCG and TCG accommodates for the fact that it's a best two out of three game, so any three of you have a thirty five percent chance to see, so one duel a match you're gonna see it, and actually semi limiting a card to twenty two to twenty five percent chance stops making it a once a match card. So that's actually like an impactful change. Doing that on Master Duel doesn't do anything when everything's a best of one anyway. And mm -hmm. like that that's a huge dynamic shift when it comes to like how you would hit cards. But uh, the the fact that they are hitting those cards suggests like, yes, they are releasing Burst of Destiny soon. Uh, at the very least, things like Destroy Phoenix Enforcer are coming. Um, I can't say how soon, but like uh, on the one hand, like, wouldn't they want to sell Destroy Phoenix Enforcer so they would leave Fusion Destiny alone? Like, they're hitting it on May 9th, and the card may not come out until, like, July, but we may not get a Forbidden List update until September or something, and they wanted to make sure that it didn't terrorize the game for two months. And the fact that they don't want it terrorizing the game, because that's their bread and butter, is selling terrorism to people. Like, I don't... <laughs> <laughs> you don't get the channel flagged. You can't say the T word. The Americans don't like it. You can't do that. Dan, you're making my life hard. But just, I, I don't know. It seems weird to preemptively hit things before the cards have released, but that's what all of those semi-limits are for. And it then... does make me question, when are they going to update the list again? If they're doing this now, like, oh yeah, to take into consideration future... Why? We're not coming back to this for like another six months? Right? And like you have like the virtual world la la hit it's uh that's not a hit to virtual world that doesn't do anything to the virtual world deck if anything like if a card came back uh painful choice like if something like unbelievably obnoxious got unbanned and i had to find one slot in my deck to put it in the third la la is the card that you cut <laughs> like it, it is the least important card in the deck list by the like, widest margin of any deck I've ever played. Like, you literally could just cut it in half and forget it existed and your deck almost doesn't change. Uh, every other card in the deck is necessary. If they hit any other Virtual World card, maybe GG, the little level three dog guy. Like, that's the only other card that's not like super mandatory three of for that deck to work the way it does. But um, Lao Lao is level six and that interacts, uh, especially as a free summon that dumps a uh, worm body that then comes back um, and is itself a tuner. There is very strong implications with an unreleased 
archetype that's also in Burst of Destiny called Sword Souls. And that's where Lao Lao is extraordinary as a three of. So ah. again, I feel like these type of hits, like people look at it like, why would they hit like Lao Lao? That doesn't do anything to Virtual World. It Again, it screams preemptive hit for the next batch of cards. Yeah, which is a interesting strategy. But of course, they've got, uh, what is it, about six to 12 months worth of head data on the TCG and the OCG <laughs> yeah. as to how these cards are going to impact the game. Yeah, it's, uh... oh my god, at first to Destiny came out in the OCG in August of 2021, so they're they're close to a year ahead. Yeah, so they can make some data, and I see like they've taken all those, they've acknowledged the the meta decks, the, like on the tier lists, and said, okay, Phantom Knights, we're going to take that down, Tri Brigade, we're going to take that down a little bit. Virtual World, we're going to... Well, I say take it down. They're not really doing that, but they're kind of making you aware that they're aware of it. And they, they even decided to hit the twi uh, twice. Yeah. And, like, there's there's things like Fractal going to two makes the Zodiac version of the deck a lot worse. Because your tanky is now being used on Fractal about 33% more often. Um, so you're not using it on... A Zodiac monster anymore. You're not getting Ram Ram with it because you already drew the Fractal. 13% of your games that used to have a Fractal in it no longer do. Um, so that would lean into, okay, well, if Tri-Brigade Zodiac is the one that's like harder to play now, let's play Tri-Brigade Lyra Luch. And then that pivots over to Cobalt Sparrow, the one that gave like the targeting protection and the uh, three level one Cobalt body. Like, Sparrow. Yeah, yeah. The, that's the one that they hit. And I feel like probably the uh, the brown one was a little better to hit but um is that the one that summons another one from the deck yeah oh cobalt sparrow isn't the one that summons from the deck no cobalt sparrow is the one that's like if it's used as a link material the or, uh, sorry an excuse material the guy can't be targeted anymore and it like summons itself from the hand for free oh I, yeah i would have figured just the problem, my problem with the Lairless deck is they had so many cards in their deck where you're one card, and all of a sudden, you have full combo. Yeah, like, Bird one card. Ball is a crazy thing. Like, there, there's a lot of, like, plus... One of the birds is a plus four. The one from Maximum Crisis, I can never remember his name. Turquoise Warbler, I think. Uh, yeah, I think so. Like, that that thing being normal summoned is just like, yeah, like, plus four. And it's like, why? But, um... I mean, I can't, I can't really complain about ridiculous... Uh, amounts of card advantage when I was very heavily playing the Attic Mister deck to yeah. mostly stomp on all of these decks. Absolutely. But, uh, like, the hit to Fractal is uh, a hit to Tenki, basically. Like, Tenki has to be used on Fractal a lot more often now. which And means... that actually means that your Ash Blossom's a lot more impactful. Yes. Um, although, it's probably better to Ash the Fractal that Tenki adds. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Uh, you let them put the... Tanky down, they search the fractal, they activate the fractal, you ash it, they can't play another fractal that turn. And uh, they that's can't play the much harder that turn and like yeah, like like the Zodiac version of the deck that was like very Beast Warrior focused has been harassed tremendously. Um and then the Lyra Lusk version, um the all, the other one that you play that isn't pure, got a hit to Cobalt Sparrow. So like both versions of the deck were like hit a little bit. Again, nothing that like takes them off the table. The decks weren't taken out. They were clipped a little bit. Like Adamantinator yeah. Analyzer is uh I don't even I think that's the blue one, but like the red one, uh researcher I think her name is, like she's the one that's like crazy. Like that the red one's the significantly better card. Uh maybe it is analyzer. I probably should check. I find Adamantipator quite frustrating to play against, to be honest. Uh, it's it's not as bad as like Drytron, like I accept it, but when I see it and like they start going off, and of course that then they get through like more than half of their deck just by activating all the Adamantipator effects, and you're just like, yeah, okay, this game is probably over. Analyzes the wind one. If only your opponent controls a monster, you can special summon this card from your hand. It's the Cyber. So that's not your opener. Yeah, it, the the one that they put to two was the Cyber Dragon that helps the deck go second a little bit. I thought that they hit this guy, which was if you control a guy, you can special it from your hand. It's like Noble Knight Gawain. Uh, this one is the dumb one. This is the one if you control a rock monster, just summon me for free. 
that says like summon me next to Kokimiro Guardian and you can't even get hand trapped. Like, yep. This this is the card they should have hit. This thing is like why the deck is well block dragon is why the deck is the deck. But even without no block, block dragon, dragon, yeah, that's a card that just shouldn't be around. Yeah, block dragon is still legal even after this list update, which is just. Yeah. Un now, to my former colleague, told you. I told you Block Dragon was an insane card. <laughs> like, not okay. <laughs> just Yeah, just no, no, no. That's, okay. that's another thing. But, yeah, if we go back to the list, I think uh, we can actually talk about... And this is sort of some high-level game theory for you guys. Uh, like, you've got to look at what's... Oh, how do I phrase this? I've got to be careful. Um, whenever you're playing a game... Information about what's not there is sometimes more important than the information that is there. Um, to draw a parallel to that, there was a board game I played. Um, I can't remember. I think it was uh, Murder in Hong Kong or something like that, where you have a forensic uh, scientist and they can't tell you what what's going on, but they know exactly who committed the crime and how they did it. And they've got to point to cards uh, they put notices on their cards and you, you can then have to ask people questions essentially to try and figure out what happened. But the key to winning that game is to look at what the forensic person doesn't include in the information that they share with you because that gives you a, a, lot, a lot of information you can work with where you go, well, why didn't they? So you can look at this and say, why weren't things addressed? And you can then start making inferences onto uh, future releases or other things going on, I guess. And like you, when you, for example, you look at your opponent's hand or something, uh, and you what's not there, that does give you quite a bit of information as well. But it's just like one of those things. Sometimes, uh, sort of being able to see what's not there will give you a bigger advantage of just seeing what is there. Hold on, there's a, there is actually a real world example. I think it was World War Two. Uh, this is a very famous example. You've probably heard of this one where the they were trying to figure out where to reinforce the planes uh, for where, and they were like, okay, here's where all the bullet holes are, so this is where we need to reinforce it. I can't remember, but it was one of the most intelligent things ever said was, uh, I think it was a guy who said, no, you should look at where there are no bullet holes because those are the planes that didn't come back. Right. And that's where they reinforced it. So the, the, the information that wasn't there was more important than the information that was there. Yeah, the, uh, the, the plane example is what I actually was thinking as you were talking about that. Um, it's uh... Yeah, I was just trying to remember. I wish I could remember who, who said that, because there was such an important person, they shouldn't be forgotten. <laughs> right. Uh, I can't remember. Honest, I believe it was a military general from England, but I can't remember. I'm sorry. Hold on, while you talk, I'm going to Google it. Uh, the uh, the Yu-Gi-Oh equivalent um, that I can think of for a card is something like Memory of an Adversary, where it doesn't say the word target on it. Uh, when the monster declares an attack on you, you banish the attacking monster, and then it's summoned to your field on the following turn. Uh, it doesn't target the attacking monster, it is just a non-targeting banish in the form of a battle trap. So all these things like Blue Eyes Chaos Max Dragon, or Cosmo Dark Destroyer, and uh, and anything that's like it can't be targeted or destroyed by card effects and like how am i going to possibly deal with this like red eyes dark dragoon and memory of an adversary is a card that anyone can play that answers all of those cards and it's because of what the card doesn't say that it's such a powerful card and you'll find that especially those of you who like to attend sneak peeks uh looking for the cards like that will help you um People eventually find out that those cards are good and then they go up in price like crazy and become a lot harder to get and you can get them ahead of people if you train yourself to look for the cards that don't say certain things, uh, evenly matched. Yeah, not once per turn, like yeah. uh, Spiral. Star Striker Engage. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Abraham Wald, apparently, was the person who said that, but it says the story might be true. Ah. So we don't know if it ever actually happened, but either way, it's, it's very good advice. Yes. So, uh, the other very important thing about this Forbidden Unlimited list update um, is the dismantling bonuses. Uh, if a card is designated as limited, semi-limited, or forbidden on this Forbidden Unlimited list, an extra 20 point craft bonus will be available uh, when dismantling the card. Uh, basically full dust renewal from Hearthstone. 
So my three Ben 10 I have, I'm going to get uh, 60 super rare points for dismantling the two extra Ben 10. Um, I, I appreciate that they're doing this. This is, I, I mean, they have other games to confirm that this is the right move, but this is absolutely the right move. This is how you don't lose all your players when you murder their deck is you give them any super or ultra rare they want in compensation for what they lost. And uh. I feel like, again, that's why nothing on the list is an ultra rare. Because... <laughs> Oh my god, I, just, I have thoughts on this, because ultimately this is actually a trap, and people think, oh, well, at least I'm getting something back, but if the deck does get murdered by these changes, you're not getting a refund on all of the other cards that you crafted, like the Evas or uh, the Heralds and stuff like that. Like, you don't ever get refunded for those. They'll, they'll, they'll refund you for the problematic cards, but then you're like... Well, now I, I, what do I do? Just dismantle these cards that are like really strong? They also saw me coming. Uh, the number of times the bonus can be gained corresponds to the reduction of the max copies of the cards in the deck. I'm not going to be able to just sit there and crack uh, Cyber Angel packs and dismantle all the Ben 10s for 30 forever. Because <laughs> that was yeah, absolutely that. the plan. <laughs> but uh... Yeah, but I, I could just stock up on an infinite number of Super Agent. Well, not infinite, but a significant number of... Uh high level super rare gems but you still could do that right because uh you only then get a refund on the last one you uh oh, number of times bonus games card. Card. Oh, you can only get the yeah. bonus once yeah uh well twice on a super uh, twice, oh, twice on a limited card once on a semi-limited card which again leads back to why they semi-limited like 12 things and only hit limited like two things this is ultimately only giving out 40 super rare gems oh, total to right the there. community right june 10th yeah, that's that's the duration of the extra money. If you don't, um, oh yeah, oh you, that's not the the forbidden limited list. No, that's no, that's like, if you wait until June eleventh to dismantle your Ben tens, then you're only going to get ten for them. Ah, uh, that seems unnecessary, <laughs> um, but sure. Uh, for unlimited cards, the limit becomes one extra thing. Like they, they're just explaining what I just said, and that's fine. Uh, yeah, but they've not considered the fun factor. Uh, okay, like I don't, I don't want to rag on it too hard. But shall we? All right. What's your overall impression of this? Are you feeling motivated to play Master Duel over the next season, or not so? Uh, well, I'm taken back to a Forbidden Limited list update from the mid, uh, the mid tens, where there was an old Heratic Gishki deck that terrorized the game by hand looping everybody like for six using uh, Evagishki, Gust Kraken, and Heratic Tefnuit, and so on and so forth. And the deck played three Gust Kraken, but it also searched for it every duel using something like Gishki Vision, and then added it back to hand over and over again with the Aquamere and kept summoning the same Gust Kraken over and over and over. The other two stayed in your deck the entire game. And there was a hit on the Forbidden and Limited list in the TCG that limited Gust Kraken which changes nothing. It's literally the equivalent of like limiting the Conquistador and stuff. Like the deck didn't change really. Uh, the loop was still there at full power, and I never saw the deck again. No, it, yeah, no one oh, ever played it ever again. And I was just like, okay, cool. So I feel like, despite my personal feelings and what I believe to be awareness of the changes to the decks and how functional they are or aren't a lot of people are going to see ben 10 go to one and think that their deck is dead and stop playing it because that seems to be from my experience how players behave now not everyone's going to do that and two weeks later people are going to be like oh it's not dead after all and go back to it but i do feel like there's going to be a nice blissful period from may 10th to maybe the end of May there, like the, the May season, I guess we'll just go with, uh, where you're going to see an awful lot less Drytron and Eldlick because people think that the list killed their decks. And that's appealing to me because not it's not that I don't like playing against those decks. No matter what, you take away those two decks and two others just fill in the same void of being the new quote-unquote best and most annoying deck that everyone plays and gets stale. But it will be refreshing to see two different decks doing that. So I'll at least have a couple of weeks of like it not feeling solved and boring. Yeah, I get that. I'm 
for me, I'm a, I'm a little bit disappointed, to be honest. I would have liked to have seen some more heavy-handed hits to the ultra-oppressive cards. I feel like that would have been the best thing for diversity, is sort of putting more restrictions on the cards that very openly say your opponent can't play Yu-Gi-Oh. Mm. Uh, things like True King of All Calamities, um, Imperial Order, Herald and some of the Ultra. cards. <laughs> well, Her Herald of Ultimateness... Yeah, that's Herald of Ult Perfection and Ultimateness. I mean, you could the Evo is a huge part of the reason they have enough cards to discard to stop you from playing. Uh, and that not addressing that, it means that the game feels like it's not going to be that different. It's pretty much going to still be the same setups, and those decks are going to exist and do just slightly different combos to get to the same end result. And it, it's... It's still going to make it a little bit harder to take outsider decks yeah. and climb them to plat one. Getting to plat is on most decks doesn't appear to be a problem. Like it's actually for me quite, quite easy. It's just I get to that point where I'm like, okay, now I either build my deck to beat one of these decks or and lose to the other, and I don't have enough room to play my theme and beat both these decks. The decks that you can do that with are, for example, the ones that we've done features for on the YouTube channel, like the Utopia deck, uh, which is technically just Herald, but less less consistent. <laughs> uh, it does the same thing, just says your opponent gets negated five times. Um, at, at Ignisters is the only one that feels like actually different because it it's a proper board breaker deck. Uh, and it's to be fair, that's the deck I'd still play. If you, you want the easiest climb to Platinum 1, go watch that Agnister feature, build that deck card for card, Learn how to play it, and then just just free roll all the way up to uh, platinum one. Yeah, we don't have to change a single card in that deck list, and everyone else lost cards, so it's literally just better than it used to be. Yeah, I mean, I would. I'm looking back, I'm thinking like I I could make changes to the deck here and there, make some snips, but I don't need to. Yeah, like I, even I, with that version, it's I feel way bad for good putting enough. you on it so quickly because like, hey, new master duel game, awesome, and like we had the best deck in the game on like day two. Yeah, the problem is, is I feel like if you always got to go second, you have got the best deck in the game. I feel like in the games where you have to go first, you're very much not on the best deck in the game. No, no, Drytron is better than it going first, but Drytron is like 8th or 9th yeah. going second. Yeah, yeah, and then you just kaiju the ultimate this and <laughs> roll, roll them over with uh, Agnisto. But yeah, um, my overall feeling is just uh, disappointment. I feel like there's not enough, like... If they back this up with some product releases, uh, maybe a new structure deck or two or something like that to, to play around with, then I might get a little bit more hyped. But nothing is screaming to me right now that anything's really changed. Yeah, like especially the selection packs just added what was missing from the existing card pool already. That was... That's probably the biggest disappointment of Master Duel for me to date is... Um... Like, the cards included in this pack, some of them were already in Master Duel, which is, like, extra infuriating, like, this Ecclesia and stuff. Oh, it's just so when you open the packs, you've got to open more pack packs to yeah. get the stuff that you need. But, like... Sorry, product manager hat, we're gonna put, we're gonna take that off, because I could literally go down and break down the <laughs> game economy and all of that sort of stuff, but that's way beyond the scope, and also in territory that may get me into trouble, uh, so I'm not gonna go there, yeah. but yeah, I could... I, I just literally you, tell you like, all of these decisions are intentional we uh we had master duel was like okay here's all the sets that are legal and this is the day that the list takes place in it's just the ocg list from july 1st 2021 with set rotation banned for a reason and like out, outside of that it was like okay so where's the rest of like the cards from july 1st 2021 then like we were just missing like 18 cards from Dawn of Majesty, nine cards from Synchro Storm, and 15 cards from Brothers of Legend. And the only thing they did here was add those missing cards from sets that we already had. And I guess if like you're a pure Master Duel player, you wouldn't have known that, but it feels bad as like a TCG player to know that like they hyped up and are monetizing this like update and all they're doing is like selling us the cards that we kind of felt we already were supposed to have at that point. If that makes sense, like... I mean, if you're a TCG player, it does. I mean, I exclusively play Master Duel. Right. Uh, so for me, it is all new cards. It's the first time I was uh, reading some of these cards. Or at least I don't even remember from back when I was working. Probably brand new to my eyes. 
But I get what you're saying. Like, but the only way that your your problem is going to be solved is if there's cards that are unique to Master Duel. Well, no, it's not that... I, I don't mean uh, out in the TCG outright. Uh, I mean that, like, card sets exist... Like, uh, the, the set burst of... Uh, uh, actually, I'll just use a really old example. Um, there was a Cosmo Blazer set, the set that debuted Fire Fist Monsters, and also in yeah, that yeah. set was Breakthrough Skill. And mm -hmm. um, the first cards that were revealed were the Fire Fist cards, and all these people were proxying up decks and playtesting them in insert X method here. And... Uh, I, I like I remember going to locals and everyone being like, oh my god, this like fire fist bear card ruins the game. Like this is the least fun I've ever had playing Yu-Gi-Oh. What is wrong with Konami? Ra rah rah. And then like eight days later, breakthrough skill was revealed, and suddenly everyone felt better. Because like we didn't just have three veilers, we had three veilers, we had three breakthrough skill. Like there was the the rest of Cosmo Blazer put the other cards in Cosmo Blazer into context on into context that actually made like it makes sense and it's like okay well like obviously the billion dollar corporation knows what it's doing and like it, it's yeah i was there I yeah remember. so like it, it's master duel has done the equivalent of that we we had the fire fist cards without breakthrough skill we literally had the, we were missing cards from dawn of majesty but had cards from dawn of majesty in master duel like, we were only missing, like, 25 cards from that set. Like, just the Stardust Dragon stuff and the Despia stuff. And then when they, like, were finally like, oh, here's, like, your first ever update to the card pool, the only cards they added to the card pool were the Stardust Dragon stuff and the Despia stuff, the things missing from Dawn of Majesty. It didn't actually change the calendar one day. It, like, it's it was July 1st, 2021 on launch, and after the update, it was still July 1st, 2021. They just gave us the cards that they held back that were already out on July 1st of 2021. They only gave us half of the most quote-unquote recent set in July of 2021, and then they just gave us the other half in this update. Yeah. That's like, what leaves I'll... a bad taste in my mouth. It's like, why would you give us the Gizmec cards and not the Stardust ones? And Because and... it creates additional product skews. Ah, oh, again, I... Yeah. I could literally go through and tell you all this, uh, explain all this sort of stuff, but A, it could get me into trouble. B, it's... It's very business focused uh, with that kind of decision making. And this is kind of what, if for anybody who's unfamiliar with my work, I actually work in the games industry as a product manager. I specialize in monetization of, uh, of products. And so my job will be to, for example, go through and figure out where we could monetize uh, this game. Um, and I could go through and explain it, but again, I really would be skating on thin ice. Uh, in regards to my old NDAs, because I like I know the people that work there, their former colleagues, and uh, some of them are still friends, and I don't really want to go down that down that road. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but I mean, yeah, I, I know how I would monetize it. I would uh, going forward, like I, I would release um, the first like few ultra rares, like destroy Phoenix Enforcer. Um, I, I would make him. You could still pull him in a pack, but if you want to craft him, you can only craft him as a glossy, and it'll cost uh, 300 instead of 30. Like 10 of them, because it's a 1 in 10 chance for a glossy. For the first four months. And then four months later, you unlock the ability to craft him for only 30, like everything else, and get a regular one. But you have to either pull it in a pack, or craft your glossy one, and it doubles as an early bird bonus to people who are there on launch that want to guarantee themselves a glossy of like the ultra rare by spending the 300 points on it. I'd be heavily more also heavily focusing on the cosmetics side of things to uh, siphon gems oh, out of people. Uh, like, <laughs> How do we I'd love to see some GX theme wards, <laughs> to be honest. I'd love to see like the Ra Academy. Less. You can do something with the classic Egyptian gods. You could have a Slifer. Uh, if you've ever played Legends of Rune Terror, they've got a dark cosmic board. And like you get this pet, which is just a cosmic destroyer, and he like, literally obliterates stuff. <laughs> uh, it's all built into the board and it looks like really impressive when you're playing on it like all of that stuff is like really cool and i appreciate a lot of work has to go into generating those assets and creating the animations audio files and putting them out there but and you only a player will only ever buy one of them i don't know how big the team on master duel is but like i'd be really aggressively pressing those bundles i'd be doing personalized stores for people so it'd be a case of like okay i can see my packs this person's buying 
uh, I'm going to give them an off a daily time limited offer. Uh, hey, this secret pack, uh, it's on sale right now. Uh, you can get 750 10 packs of this secret pack without having to craft anything to unlock the secret pack. Mm. And I'd be looking at your, I'd be using AI to look at your player data to do that. I'd be, oh god, the stuff that I would do is like literally, I have no soul at this point. Like it's <laughs> uh, like I, I I have done research on companies done really shady stuff, and I'm going, I wish I had that idea. That's that's how little humanity I have left inside of me at this point. <laughs> I mean, I. Uh... I, I can understand still, and I, uh, I'm just gonna get to the other two of these. Um, the <laughs> the fact that we don't have a blue eyes white dragon mate is astounding to me. Be in a bundle. <laughs> It'd be in an expensive fifty dollar bundle. Is how I would do it. It'd be like, yeah, you get these gems, you get a couple of Master Dual Packs, or Blue Eyes specific packs, uh, an alternate art Blue Eyes, and you get the Blue Eyes pet, and it'd be like 50 bucks. And people would buy it. I mean, yeah, I would. I'm compulsive to the point that, like, I, I got all the bundle deals and the Dual Pass, I got all of the mates, all of the Dual Fields, all of the Protectors, and all of the Icons, and I got all three of all three Structure Decks. And... It Landed exactly on 69 gems. I did. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Uh, but yeah, like that kind of that cosmetic stuff, those bundles, the learning uh, about players and then advertising content that's relevant to them is stuff that would really help the retention metric. Because I imagine that retention is starting to drop off a cliff at this point with the lack of content uh, coming out and also uh, decks. But no, it just feeds in, right? There's not, there's no new content coming, so it's a little age, and so uh, it's a little bit hard to get excited to to play when you're logging in. You're like, okay, so climbing is playing against Drychon, Elplick, and Tri Brigade. Yeah, and like, <sighs> there's like, like you said, with like the retention thing, I feel like they need something more than just the dual ladder, and the dual rooms are poorly executed uh there's like the the fact you need like the room codes and like how to like share them i can't go to like my friends list and click on you and just challenge you to a duel which i think is ridiculous oh that's an easy feature to implement it should be quite high on the backlog as well oh okay sorry i'm gonna go too technical but a feature backlog is essentially you go through a digital product and you would say okay We've only got so many resources, in other words, people that can work on this stuff. How do we, how do we get those people to work on the stuff that's going to generate the most value? It's going to bring money back into the project while we're developing it out. And you'll go through and you'll figure out exactly how, by complexity, how difficult these things are to implement. Uh, things have dependency on other features, and you then make judgment calls where you'd say, okay, then uh, we're going to have this challenge a friend because this is going to improve a metric that's very important to us which is going to be player retention because if i can challenge my friend easier than the hoops that they've got to jump through uh they're more likely to come on every day after school and play you know that's the thing you almost create a narrative around the feature uh that you're you're building for and yeah that that, that would be a feature that i would prioritize quite highly would be uh challenge friends um there's other stuff I'd like to do, George. I don't know if you can set your own FL lists for those rooms. Well, yeah, exactly. Um, I, I think you can, but only during events. Like, you can choose between synchro event or ah, standard okay. list and stuff. And, like, I feel like they should have some kind of mode where, like, you're allowed to just play any card you want, but obviously it's not in a ranked duel. You can't and get let, anything let for it. Well, the problem is, is then people wouldn't play anything. They'd just run their own tournaments. Yeah. Well, I mean, people yeah, are doing that anyway. Well, yeah, but then you still like gotta buy the cards, right? If you did it the other way, like you just wouldn't have to buy cards. You just log on and do what a DK tour to one uh, K or something. I, don't know. I feel like if I was able to actually like play test a deck, I'd be more inclined to buy the cards for the deck. There's got to be a way to make that work. I I would like it even if you could only do it against the AI. Yeah, exactly. Test it. I mean, like... you've got the you can draw the hands like if you just use the deck builder like from there, but it's a little bit clunky. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, overall, like 
I still really like Master Duel, uh, and I appreciate a lot of what we've said so super negative. And ultimately, the reason the disappointment is there is because I am enjoying that this is finally released, and there's a lot of great things about this game uh, that still continues to be fun. It's just almost feels like money's being left on the table from a company perspective, and that the game has so much potential. Whenever you could sort of see areas where that potential is not being realized, it creates doubt or a bit of frustration. And for us, it's like, you, if you don't want to update the FNL list, just give us more cards. Like, start putting them out there. People will then spend money, and it will give us options to deal with the really oppressive stuff. Or get rid of the oppressive stuff so I can play other cards in my collection. Either of these things would be good. Well, I think that'll just about do it. Uh, did you have any other final thoughts? Uh, no, uh, I guess we can talk a little bit about upcoming content for the channel. Uh, I am going to put out a Karibo deck profile. I've actually been getting asked quite a lot about it. It was just one of the fun decks that I played that just realized when I got to plat, it wasn't going to break through these top tier meta decks easy enough. Uh, so I kind of abandoned the concept and I put out one of the duels uh, for one of our um, daily contents. And I keep getting asked like, oh yeah, can we see this deck? So. I will get that sorted out this week. Uh, next show will be on the live stream on Twitch the 8th of May, and we have a special guest joining us for that as well, another content creator. Uh, somebody, if you follow competitive Yu-Gi-Oh for a long time, uh, you'll know exactly who they are. Uh, other deck features we've got in the works. We are talking about Despia feature, and I have another one. Uh, again, it was one of the concepts that I took up to plat but decided it wasn't worth trying to take all the way to platinum one i will put together a, a deck feature for that as well and hopefully by that time when we space all the content out we'll have a few more releases and uh they can really dive into doing some more uh deck features for for newer content but there's also stuff that i really excited to do which i spoke to uh that about by working with the community for some of these uh but when i have more information to share about that i will let you guys know but for now, uh, yeah, if this is content you enjoy, shoot us a like and subscribe to the channel to be the first to know whatever new content goes out there. And I really hope that you've enjoyed this deep dive with uh, myself and Dan. Yes. And I also am, as always, grateful to have you on. Your insights are incredibly valuable. So valuable, in fact, that Konami won't let you give me 99% of them. So <laughs> <laughs> well, uh... That has been a pretty fun hour. Um, I enjoy doing these. I uh, do apologize that we missed the last stream, both to you and to our audience, but we will be diligently back at the next one, and I will also be personally trying to actually stream more during the weeks now that I actually have uh, my setup all fixed up. We finally like, painted my office and I'm back where I used to be. So I will see you guys on the stream, twitch.tv slash Yu-Gi-Oh! Organization, YG Organization, and uh, we will be covering probably Despia stuff next because that's where my interest lies and I'm determined to make it work even if they did only give me like baby blocks to play oh, with. Oh, <laughs> that deck is good enough. Uh, that deck is... I, I have played decks with less potential to, to Platinum. <laughs> then that deck has so i'm sure you're going to be i'm sure it's going to be great content and everybody's going to enjoy watching that stream with you All well right. they're going to be watching you're going to be you're going to be actually doing the work that's just how it works <laughs> take care everybody